Hey, great tense. Um, so I just want to go over the last lesson of unit two, uh, which is um, adding and subtracting rational functions. So adding and subtracting rational functions, it always seems tricky. Um, and it's a bit of a difficult, more difficult concept, as I would say, compared to dividing and multiplying. But um, if you understand what to do with fractions, you will understand how to do this. It's a very similar concept. So basically, what we're going to do is add and subtract rational functions. So in order for you to add or subtract fractions, so a little recap, you need something called the common denominator. In order to find the common denominator, you need to find the lowest common multiple and not multiply. I'm not sure why I wrote that. <laughs> um, so you want to find the lowest common multiple. And the lowest common multiple can be found by multiplying the denominators. But I will be very clear on this. This does not always work. And this isn't a very good, efficient way to do this. Um, and in grade 10, you may have, sorry, in elementary school, you may have learned that that's one way to find the lowest common multiple, but that doesn't always work out very well. Um, a lot of times you actually can find a smaller one by simply um, <clears throat> finding a common factor and reducing it as much as you can. So when you want to add or subtract fractions, you basically find the lowest common multiple. In our case, that rule does work um, to simply multiply four times five. Doesn't always work though, right? So just to be clear. So in this case, we uh, we know our lowest common multiple is 20. So I take 3 over 4, and I try to rewrite it as a denominator of 20. So I know that you're probably wondering, why am I going over fractions? Um, because if you understand how to do this, honestly, the rational functions will be extremely similar. So you know the common factor here is, sorry, <clears throat> um, the lowest common multiple is 20. So you have to think to yourself, what do I multiply 4 by to get to 20? I simply multiply by 5. So then I do the same thing in the numerator. I multiply by 5. And I do the same for um, the denominator here. I multiply by 4 to get to 20. So I do the same to the numerator. I multiply by 4. This gives me 8. And 3 times 5 gives me 15. <clears throat> and then our last step here, once I have um, my equivalent fractions that have the same denominator, now that I have the same denominator, now I can add. So I simply add them up. And this ends up giving me 15 over 8 which becomes 23, and that gives me 23 over 20, which obviously um, I can leave as that, or I can reduce it to 1 and 3 twentieths. Um, <clears throat> but if you are adding um, a fraction like this, 3 over 4 plus 3 over 8, just be clear that you wouldn't just multiply 4 and 8 to find the lowest common multiple. It would actually be 8. So you always want to look for the smallest common multiple, right? You want to be efficient with this, and we'll talk about why. Um, it actually makes quite a big difference here. So in fractions, obviously, it doesn't make a huge difference. But when you're looking at rational functions, it does, right? Uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at here is how do you first identify the lowest common multiple? How do you then change uh, your rational function to find an equivalent rational function? And finally, how do you add or subtract them? And that's the easy part right? once, you find the, uh, once you find a common denominator there. So to add or subtract rational functions, the first thing you need to do if the denominators are not already factored, you have to factor them first, right? Um, no big shock, I'm hoping now, uh, because you've seen this, that we've done this throughout already, right? Uh, we've noticed that we can't actually simplify, add, or, sorry, we can't simplify, multiply, or divide rational functions until we have factored it. So if it's a monomial, you don't have to factor it, but if it's a binomial, trinomial, or anything more, you will likely have to factor it. Once you have factored already, uh, you need to find the lowest common multiple, um, which is the product of any common factors and the unique factors. Um, so what I mean by unique factors is that you are looking for um, factors that come up <clears throat> uh, uniquely in one of the rational functions. So if x minus 2 appears in one of the denominators and x minus 2 squared appears in another denominator, then you only include x minus 2 squared in the lowest common multiple. You don't include x minus 2 and x times x minus 2 squared, which would actually give you, by the way, so x minus 2 times x minus 2 squared, that would actually end up giving you x minus 2 cubed. So notice that I'm, I'm kind of, what I'm really doing here, and I know it's kind of weird to think about this, doesn't look like it. I'm actually using exponent laws, right? Because this is a common base, and I'm just saying that I can um, 
<clears throat> simply add the exponents, right? So this would technically mean if I, if again, if I were just to multiply them without thinking it through, I would end up getting a lowest common multiple of x minus two cubed. But you want to find the lowest, um, lowest common multiple. So in this case, x minus two squared would suffice, right? That would be enough. Once you find the lowest common multiple, then you find the equivalent expression. And this is actually extremely similar to what you did with fractions. What you're gonna do is you are going to um, change the numerator and the denominator accordingly so that you have this, the common uh, lowest common multiple as a denominator. So kind of similar to what you did with fractions where you have three over four and uh, I can't remember the number now, two, 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 two over five. So when we had two over five, the, you needed a common denominator 20. So that means that you, once you knew that it was common denominator 20, you had to think to yourself, how do I go from four to 20? And then whatever I do to the numerator, I do to the denominator. It's the same idea here, right? It's not that different. We know that we're just simply figuring out how to go from the one denominator here to the common, uh, to the lowest common multiple. And then whatever you do to the numerator, I do to the denominator and vice versa. Um, so that's your next step. You find the equivalent expression and then your almost our second last step, or I think this is your last step, except other than the restrictions, um, you're going to then add the numerator and the denominator with the lowest common multiple as the common denominator. So once again, when you add or subtract, a little reminder, you don't actually add the denominators or subtract them. You simply add the numerators once you find the lowest common multiple. Right, um, And then your very last step here, don't forget about this, you find the zeros of the lowest common multiple. And why do you find the zeros of the lowest common multiple? Because these are your restrictions. So very similar to what we did before, um, you simply just check when the denominator is equal to zero. And notice that that will actually be the same as the zeros of your lowest common multiple, okay? So let's do an example here to help us out. So <clears throat> in this case, um, the first step is actually really easy because everything's factored out. It's it's monomials, so I don't really have to do much there. So I first want to figure out what's my common multiple. So my lowest common multiple is thinking to myself, okay, what is the product? Um, what what are what? So if I want to find the lowest common multiple, what is the lowest? Let's start with the numbers first. What is the lowest common multiple for the num for the coefficients there? Eight, four, and six. Well, I noticed that it would be 24. How do I know it's 24? You can do a little bit of math here. I check. Um, I know that four and six, let's actually, let's focus on the lowest common multiple of four and six. That might be easier. What's the lowest common multiple of four and six? Well, lowest common multiple of four and six, uh, doing a little bit of math here, you might notice that it would be 12, right? Um, you could think 24, but it's actually not gonna work there. It's gonna be 12. Um, that's the lowest common multiple. And then you have to think to yourself, okay, well, that mul that whatever multiple I choose also has to be a multiple of eight. Um, and that's not really going to work, right? Because obviously eight does not go into 12. But um, we might notice that um, if I multiply eight times three, that gives me 24. And 24 can be divided by four, six, and eight. So that would be my lowest common multiple. Okay, so in my low, in this case, my lowest common multiple is simply 24. Now, what about my lowest common multiple for the x's, for the x uh, powers of x? What I notice with the powers of x is that um, they all have, uh, the, all the denominators have x, but they have different degrees of it, right? Different exponents. I want to pick um, the one that, I, I want to pick, again, a lowest common multiple that works for all of them. So this is different than a common factor, right? We try to find the lowest common multiple. Um, you need to make sure that all these denominators um, can multiply to give you the lowest common multiple, just like we did with fractions, right? Um, so in our case here, what we want to think about is, um, so I'm going to write this down, 8x squared, 4x, and 6x cubed. And I want to think to myself, okay, what do all these, all these denominators, what can all of them be multiplied into, right? So what you might notice is that, again, they all have 24, they can all be multiplied to give you 24, and that would be the smallest number I can, all of them can go into. And more specifically, they all have, will have to have x. Now, I cannot use x as my lowest common multiple because, unfortunately, x cubed, there's no way that I can go from x cubed to just having an x, right? Unless I, I'm 
dividing in this case, but remember, I'm trying to multiply to give me, I'm trying to multiply to give a, the lowest common multiple, right? The name kind of says it itself. So that means that I would, it would need to have an exponent of three and not an exponent of two or one in order for this to work. And again, you might notice that this is actually going to work for all of them because I can simply, to go from 4x to 224x cubed, all I really need to do here, and I can put this here at the bottom, is multiplied by 6x squared. To go from 6x cubed to 24x cubed, I can simply multiply by 4. I don't have to multiply by an x there, right? Because it's going from x cubed to x cubed. And to go from 8x squared to 24x cubed, I simply multiply by, um, in this case, 3x. Does that kind of make sense? I'm hoping that it's starting to make a bit more sense. So really what I'm doing, just sim very similar to what you did with fractions, you're just finding a common denominator for all of them. So now, um, once you found the, your common denominator, we're simply trying to figure out how do I go from the denominators I have now to the lowest common multiple that I'm supposed to have. So what you're gonna do now is you're simply gonna find the equivalent fractions. So in my first fraction there, I have 8x squared, and I want to think to myself, and actually I did the work up here, but I'm just kind of rewriting it here, um, and it's color-coded, so it looks a little nicer. Um, I noticed that 8x squared obviously needs to go to 24x cubed, because that's my lowest common multiple, and I do that by multiplying by 3x. Now notice that because I multiplied the denominator by 3x, what do I need to do to the numerator? I need to multiply by 3x because this is just like fractions. Whatever you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator. So I multiply the both the numerator and the denominator by 3x because that's um, what I need to multiply by to get my lowest common multiple. For 3 over 4x, um, I noticed that it's the same idea. I need to, to go from 4x to 24x cubed. I simply multiply by 6x squared and 6x squared, and I multiply in the numerator and the denominator there, okay? So I multiply the numerator and denominator by 6x squared, and then that will help me to um, find my equivalent uh, rational expression. And my last step here, I simply take my 6x squared right there, and I have to think to myself, how do I go from 6x squared to 24x squared, sorry, 6x cubed to 24x cubed? I multiply by 4. And again, this is what we saw right here. I only have to multiply by 4 because I already have um, the common denominator. So I already have the same power that I want. Um, I already have x cubed as my power, and I'm just trying to get it to another power that has x cubed. So another term that has x cubed. So I don't have to multiply by any variable. I simply have to multiply by a constant, a number, which is 4. So now that I have I have figured out what I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by to get to my common denominator, so this is very similar to fractions, all I need to do is simply simplify this, right? Um, so I'm going to simplify this expression. So I have 5 times 3x. Let's do a little bit of math here. 5 times 3x is 15x. And this part shouldn't be too bad. Um, 3 times 6x squared gives me 18x squared and one times four gives me four. And now that I have a common denominator, notice I have a common denominator right there. All I need to do is simply add 15x plus 18x squared minus four. So I add the three terms up and this ends up giving me, um, when I add all three terms up, it ends up giving me 15x plus 18x squared minus four or all over 24x cubed. And this is just like what we did with fractions. When you have a common denominator, so I'm gonna go back to something easy. If I give you something like this, three over four plus five over four, how do you add them up? You simply add the numerators together. And because I have a common denominator, I don't have to change anything in the denominator. I just keep it the way it is. And I get eight over four, and then I reduce it to two. In this case, I'm not gonna reduce it. Like that's not gonna happen here, but that's essentially the idea here, right? I simply, add my uh, numerators, uh, well, add in this case, and then subtract the last one. And then I end up getting, I write that all over the common denominator, 24x cubed. And so now I'm done. And notice that I have to write my restriction. My restriction here is actually quite easy. It's just that x cannot equal zero. So that was actually pretty simple. And how do I know it's that easy? Because my lowest common multiple is 24x cubed. And I know that 24x cubed 
cannot equal zero, sorry, is gonna equal zero when X is equal to zero, right? Pretty simple, hopefully. You're just dividing by 24, zero divided by 24 is zero. And then you take the cube root of zero and you get zero. So pretty easy answer. Basically, we're just saying that X cannot equal zero there. So I'm hoping that makes sense so far. So how do you find a common denominator, uh, sorry, find a common factor of binomials? So what if you have a, a more complex expression? So let's do another uh, example here. So we have seven over two X minus five times X minus four <clears throat> uh, plus four over X minus four squared. So first thing I notice is that I have a common denominator of uh, X minus four. So X minus four seems to come up twice here. So I have an X minus four um, binomial there and X minus four binomial there. Um, but notice that it comes up twice. And we talked about this, the fact that you always wanna find the lowest common multiples, the product of all the common factors and any, any common unique factors, right? So in our case here, we wanna make sure that it has X minus, we have X minus four squared in our lowest common multiple, right? So we wanna make sure X minus four squared is in the lowest common multiple along with two X minus five. Does that make sense so far? So X minus four squared and two X minus five is gonna be part of your lowest common multiple. So now that you have that, uh, what you're gonna do is you're simply gonna find your lowest common multiple by figuring out how to go from the, this fraction over here to having a lowest common multiple of that and this fraction over here to having a lowest common multiple of that. So I'm gonna rewrite it a little bit differently and I'm gonna try my best to squeeze it in here. And I'm hoping this makes more sense because I feel like some of you might be getting a little bit lost. So I'm hoping this makes more sense. I'm essentially trying to figure out just like we did before at the very beginning with fractions, I'm trying to figure out how to go from this um, uh, rational expression on the left to this um, rational expression on the right with a common denominator of x minus four squared times two x minus five. So to do this, what I have to do is simply figure out, okay, well, what am I missing? So to go from two x minus five times x minus four to x minus four squared times two x minus five, I need to multiply by um, x minus four, right? Because x minus four um, is in this is in this term, but it doesn't come up in this term, right? Do I need to multiply by 2x minus 5? No, I don't have to do that because 2x minus 5 is already there. So you're basically doing a comparison test. You're checking to see what am I missing to go from to go from this denominator here, and I'll do this in orange, to go from this denominator here to this denominator over here, what is missing? What is the only thing that is missing between them? The only thing that's missing is that I'm multiplying by x minus 4. And you can do a little bit of math here, right? 2x minus 5 times x minus 4 times x minus 4. Does that give you this expression here? Yes, I, I do get the exact same expression. So that means that my new denominator is being multiplied by x minus 4. And if you recall with fractions, if I multiply the denominator by x minus 4, then I need to multiply the numerator by x minus 4, just like with fractions when you know, whatever you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator, it's the exact same rule here. So I'm going to be multiplying the numerator over here by x minus 4. And then for the second fraction there, I have x minus 4, sorry, 4 over x minus 4 squared. Like this. So I'm going to try to think to myself, how do I go from x minus 4 squared to a common denominator of x minus 4 squared times 2x minus 5? So what am I missing? So again, it's the same comparison game. What am I missing in this case? So to go from x minus 4 squared to x minus 4 squared times x 2x minus 5, so it's really hard to say that, um, what am I missing there? Well, the only thing that's missing, I have x minus four here and x minus four there. So the only thing I need to really multiply by is two x minus five. So again, the same similar idea. I just write down that I'm multiplying by two x minus five. And what's the rule in uh, with fractions? Whatever you do to the numerator, I do to the denominator. So that means I'm gonna multiply the numerator by two x minus five. So I'm gonna multiply four times two x minus five. And this will end up giving me 
And again, I'm just going to race this a little bit, if you don't mind, because it's starting to get really, really messy. So I know that I just have to multiply four times two X minus five to get um, my common, sorry, to get my equivalent uh, fraction or my equivalent rational expression. So that means that I end up getting um, seven. And again, what am I doing here? I am simply going to, and I'm going to erase it also, it gets less messy. I simply notice that I am multiplying um, <clears throat> the first rational expression by X minus four, because that was the only factor that was missing in my denominator here. The only denominator miss, sorry, the only factor missing in the, in the first denominator was X minus four. So I had to multiply the numerator and the denominator by X minus four. And what was missing in the second fraction? Well, in my second fraction there, rational expression, what was missing was X minus four. So I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by two X, sorry, two X minus five. That's what I meant to say. The, the factor missing was two X minus five. So I multiply the numerator and the denominator by two X minus five. So my next step here, now that I have a common denominator, I know I simply have to um, you know, simplify the numerator, the numerator as much as I can. And so I expand out. So I expand out with the brackets. And this ends up giving me um, 7x uh, minus 28. And of course, over here, so notice I'm kind of showing every little step here. x minus 4 times x minus 4, I can rewrite that as x minus 4 squared. And notice that 7 times x minus 4 can be simplified into, and I can do it on this side here, that can be simplified into 7x minus 28. Um, all over 2x minus 5 times x minus 4 squared. And these questions are just, they're not necessarily hard. They're just really long questions, right? And then you have 2x minus 5 all over x minus 4 squared 2x minus 5. All right, so what I can do now is simply multiply this out. So this actually ends up giving me, and I might as well change it now. So when I simplify that, I end up getting um, 8x minus 20, okay? So now what I'm going to do is add 8, 7x and 8x, so that gives me 15x, and negative 20 plus negative, sorry, negative 28 plus negative 20 gives me negative 48. So I'm going to continue my solution here. Um, now that I have a common denominator, just like we saw, uh, before I can simply add them up. I can add up the numerator and the numerators together and the denominators I keep the same because they are common, right? So I don't have to do anything there. And this ends up giving me 7x minus 28 plus 8x minus 20. And of course, I can simplify that to 15x minus 48 all over 10, 2x minus 5, sorry, all over 2x minus 5 times x minus 4 squared. And what about your restrictions? So our restrictions we simply go back to our common denominator, which is right here. So in our common denominator, we're checking when is 2x minus 5 times x minus 4 squared equal to 0. So this is going to be equal to 0 when x is equal to 5 over 2. And how did I get that? So let me, I'll actually go step by step to make sure no one's, no one's behind here. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm simply making 2x minus 5 equal to 0. I bring the five over, I get two x is equal to five. I divide by two, divide by two, and then I end up getting five over two. And I do the same thing here. X minus four is equal to zero. So what does that mean? That means that if I bring the negative four over, I end up getting x is equal to four, and that's my other zero as well. So because those are the zeros of my denominator, my common denominator, those are the, the restrictions, the points at which I cannot actually evaluate my function. Okay, so again, as always, you always want to try to reduce as much as you possibly can, right? Um, there's a lot of times where you, you it might look like you're done, um, but you if you, you can just kind of do a quick check and see if you can go further. <clears throat> so um, subtracting rational fr fr uh, fractions, fr functions, sorry. Um, luckily, this is actually quite simple. Um, it's quite, sorry, not simple, but similar enough to adding uh, rational expressions. Um, the only difference really is that instead of adding the numerator, you're simply going to be subtracting what's in the numerator. That's all it is, right? Um, so you're going to follow the same steps. So first you have to find, um, you have to factor the denominators first, and you're going to notice right away these are not factors. So that's going to make this question a little bit trickier, but that's okay. You know how to factor, right? Um, so the t squared minus one, how do I factor that out? This is going to become t plus one, t minus one. 
All right, that's the difference of squares. And again, I'm hoping everyone's good with factoring. That's why I said be get really good at factoring because you're going to need to know this a lot, right? Um, so t squared plus 3t minus 4, how can I factor that out? So can you think of two numbers that add up to 3 but multiply to give you negative 4? Luckily, luckily, this is an easy case. And we know this is an easy case because um, the, the leading coefficient is 1, right? So I want to think to myself, what well, adds up to 3 and multiplies give me negative 4? So this would be um, t plus 4 and t minus 1. OK? Um, and that's all I have there, right? So I know that the two numbers are 4 and negative 1. So now that I have factored it out, then I end up with um, 2t over t plus 1 times t minus 1. And the second rational function, I have t plus 2 over 2t plus 4 times t minus 1. So what do I notice now? Well, I have a common denominator. Sorry, I have a common factor of t minus 1. So I, when I write out my lowest common multiple, I almost want to keep track. It's, think of it this way. I'm keeping track of all the common factors that I have between them. So t minus 1 is common to both of them, right? Um, and so I can include it, and I don't have to include it twice. Uh, t plus 1 is also there as well. And it's, only, it's not common to both of them, but it's definitely, it's in the first rational function. So I have to include it. And t plus, uh, sorry, and t minus t plus 4 is also included as well. So all of them are included there, right? So the, uh, again, reminder, t minus 1 and t minus 1, they, even though it comes up twice, I'm not going to write t minus 1 squared. I'm just going to write t minus 1 like that. That's my lowest common multiple. So a little hint here, you may see a question kind of similar to this. Um, and it's it's a multiple choice question. It asks you, what's the lowest common multiple? Or I think it asks you, it's, I can't remember if it says, is this the lowest common multiple? Just read that question over it. Because I can see when people, why people would get confused with it, right? Um, so remember that in this case, it, this would actually be the lowest common multiple. But if I put a square, that's not the lowest common multiple, right? Um, so remember, t minus 1 comes up twice. Um, but when you're finding the lowest common multiple, you're just trying to think what is the smallest that it can be so that both denominators can go into the lowest common multiple, right? They can multiply into it. So this would be my lowest common multiple there. So I have t plus 1 times t minus 1 times t plus 4. So now what I'm going to do is find the equivalent fraction or the rational expression. Um, and I do that by simply taking my first rational expression there. And I can do this on the side, and let me erase this. So I know that this is going to switch into t plus 1 times t minus 1 uh, times t plus 4, like that. So I want to think to myself, okay, what am I missing? What's what's what am I missing between this uh, denominator here and this denominator here? So what do I have to multiply to go from here to here, from this uh, rational, from this denominator to this denominator on the right? Well, what am I missing? Well, the only thing that I'm missing is the t plus four, right? This is the only extra factor that's missing. So that means that I'm going to have to multiply this by t plus four to get to the lowest common multiple. And remember, whatever I do to the numerator, I do to the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by t plus 4. And I can do that right there. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the second fraction. For my second fraction, I have two. Sorry, let me erase that. Du -du -du, I think I haven't erased it. They're perfect. Um, so I have t plus 2. And this is all over t plus 4 times t minus 1. And I have to think to myself, well, how do I go from this denominator to the common denominator, which is t plus 1 times t minus 1 times t minus plus 4? Well, what am I missing here? So I have the common denominator. Sorry, I have a common factor of t plus 4. It's already there, so I don't have to count it again. t minus 1 is already there. So the only thing that's missing, really, is this little guy right here, this factor, t plus 1. So t plus 1 is the only part missing. So that means I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by t plus 1. It's just like before with fractions, right? You're just trying to figure out how do I go from the denominator I have now to the lowest common multiple, right? Or the common denominator. So that's all I'm doing here. And so I'm multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same amount to get to the lowest common multiple. 
Um, so I'm going to multiply t plus 2 in the numerator by t plus 1. And that should simplify to give me, and I might as well do it up here at the top. So 2t times t plus 4 and t plus 2 times t plus 1, just like that. And this is what I end up getting. Now, this looks um, not fun, right? <laughs> it looks a little bit messy. Uh, it looks like a lot, a lot is happening here. Um, but again, really, what you're doing when you're subtracting rational expressions is you are simply subtracting, right? And then what your goal after that is, is to simplify as much as you can, as much as, po as, much as possible, right? Um, you could leave it like this, but this is messy, right? We still have a little bit more to do to simplify. So now that we have a common denominator of t plus 4 times t minus 1 times t plus 1, you know that now that you have the common denominator, all I have to do is simply subtract. I subtract this numerator, uh, sorry, I subtract this numerator by this um, numerator over here on the right. So in my next step here, oops, um, and I totally forgot to finish it up there. I should go a little bit further. Um, so that ends up giving you 2t squared, or actually, you know, I could leave it like this, 2t times t plus 4. And then, of course, all I'm going to be doing is subtracting off what this, is, what this expression is right here. So I'm going to have t plus 2 times t plus 1. And I'm simply going to divide this all by t plus 1 and t minus 1 and t plus 4, just like that. And one last thing, I did not include this on, on um, I, I didn't include this example on your, in the lesson here, but I, I think this is worth covering because a uh, little hint here, this might be on the test. If I were to give you um, an expression where I either add or subtract and I already have a common denominator, something like this, 2x plus 4 and 2x plus 4, and I'm making this up. And let's say that, um, you know, this is 6x and this is 5x right and then i asked you to simplify that you might think initially that you have to do all this work but does anyone notice anything easier i can do well this goes back to basics if you have a common denominator what are you allowed to do you're allowed to simply add them up so don't always so don't over, overthink the question sometimes right if you have a common denominator then you know you're allowed to simply add up the numerators and in this case i didn't even have to do anything else i just add up the numerators and i'm done Right. As long as I have a common denominator, I can do that. Right. So you just want to be careful with that. And um, and of course, one last thing I forgot to do here. You also want to state the restrictions, which I totally did not do. Um, I think I got a little bit lazy with this question here. So to find the, the restrictions, I simply check when the lowest common multiple is equal to zero. So it's going to be equal to zero when t is equal to negative one, t is equal to one and t is equal to negative four. And if you're wondering how I got this, I simply um, made each of them equal to zero, but this is actually a nice little easy trick here. I simply move the, <clears throat> the constants over, which means that I have to switch the signs, and that's how I got that. So that is it for this, uh, for this lesson. Like I said, um, it was try to keep it short and easy, but it's a big lesson. I know there's a lot of new concepts there, but really, if you understand factoring and you understand fractions, you are golden, right? Um, it's really not too bad. All right, best of luck.